So what's going on? So today I wanna to talk to you about five secrets that I've discovered that are gonna help you film better low light video from the Canon 80D. If you purchased a Canon 80D, you've probably invested in a wide angle lens. Now wide angle lenses are fantastic for getting much of the surrounding as well as keeping everything in focus. The one I purchased was the STM lens. That is the 10 to 18 millimeter STM lens. And this lens goes very wide all the way out to 10 millimeter. It's got really quiet focus motors. That's one of the things that I really like about it. I use it pretty much all the time. This is my main go-to lens for whenever I'm doing anything vlog style. This particular lens struggles in the low light. Solution number one is that you can upgrade to a lens with a larger aperture. One of the things you may want to consider if you've not already is to pick up a prime lens and there's actually three of them that I purchased that I'm going to go over now. So first on my list of prime lenses is the Canon EFS 24mm 2.8 STM lens. Now this lens is a fixed lens meaning that it does not have any zoom but with its 2.8 aperture it has decent low light and it also is still fairly on the wide side of things. Um, it also has decent macro capabilities, so you can get in pretty close with this lens. And it's also very thin, which is one of the neat things about it. And I have used it um, on occasion when I want to get like a group photo and I don't have enough room to back up and I want to have a little bit of a blurry background. The next lens I have here is a Canon macro EFS 35 millimeter. It actually comes with image stabilization, so you're able to turn that on or off, as well as your autofocus on or off. Uh, the, one of the really cool things about it is it has this ring light, which you can activate when it's hooked in uh, by pushing this light and cycling through the modes. And these lights will come on and it is really cool. It will actually illuminate some of your subject. Uh, you're able to get up and close pictures, like pictures of somebody's um, the iris of someone's eye. I took this really cool picture with it of um, really small seashells. Uh, it's 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 just an amazing lens. The last prime lens that I have is the Canon EFS 50 millimeter 1.8 STM lens. I can actually use this lens at night. The only thing is is that I have to have this lens on a gimbal in order. For it to be smooth because it's a 50 millimeter and it's so zoomed in that you really get some pretty bumpy shots but if you put it on a tripod you can do some night videography and you'll be able to get away with it i also used this while i was in an aquarium recently and i was doing handheld stuff with it shooting at 60 frames per second and then in post i slowed that down to 24 and it looked smooth enough believe it or not so it was kind of a hack for that low light situation and I was really happy with my results. So solution number two on my list is to get yourself some soft lights. You can't go wrong with soft lights. Soft lights will not only give you additional lighting, but they will soften out any shadows that you have and, and will allow you to edit more smoothly in your post-production and give that image. Right now, I'm actually using soft lights. I will show you them. It's actually pitch dark out here right now. I have plenty of lighting. All the footage that I record with my soft lights always ends up going so much faster in the post edits. I don't have to deal with a lot of color correction and I will leave a link in the description below where you can purchase them. They're not that expensive. So another thing you can do with low light is of course always open the aperture of your lens as far as possible as well as bring your ISO up. I will warn you, however, if you bring your ISO up too high, what will happen is you will end up with grain in your footage. So I, with a Canon 80D, I try never to go above 1600 if at all possible. So what I do in those particular instances, if I'm, say for example, I am shooting from my wide angle lens and I need, I'm at 1600 and I need a little bit more exposure, what I'll do is I'll make sure that I'm filming in 24p, which is the slowest I can possibly film in. I film cinematic anyway, so that works great for me. Additionally, what I can do is I can slow my shutter down all the way down to 1 25th of a second instead of 1 50th. So that'll also give me a little bit more light for each iteration of that shutter. Uh, I've used it indoors when I didn't have any soft lights, when I didn't have time to switch lenses. It's a hack. 
So solution number four is something you can do when you're editing your video. One of the things that I've discovered is if I'm seeing any noisy grainy footage when I'm editing, I can actually either increase the contrast, which will effectively drop the, the darks, the shadows down lower. I can decrease the shadows or the blacks. I can drop the blacks down a little bit. So that will sort of tone down the noise a little bit. And last but not least, solution number five is to use a denoising software program. For example, After Effects can denoise. I will tell you, however, that every piece of denoising software I've ever used has effectively reduced the sharpness of my images. So anyways, I hope you learned something by watching this video. I appreciate that you stuck around to the end with me. And if you've learned something from this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.